Hey everyone, it's Whitney with Wandering Littles and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about mealybugs because I have an infestation of mealybugs. I'm gonna sit here next to my Christmas tree because, well, tomorrow's Christmas Eve and I was feeling festive. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about mealybugs. I'm gonna talk about what they are, how to ID them, I'm gonna talk about how to prevent them, and then we're going to talk about how to get rid of them. I'm also gonna tell you guys what not to do because guess who did these things that we're gonna talk about? Yep, that was me. I'm gonna tell you what not to do because I want you to learn from my mistakes. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about what exactly are mealybugs. They are going to be probably the most common houseplant pests that you will ever encounter. They love warm, they love humidity, they do really well in those types of environments. So why wouldn't they want to attack your houseplants? It's warm, you're watering them, they're happy, they're gonna be really happy inside your plant. So they tend to look like little tiny pieces of cotton. I won't say tiny, but pretty small pieces of cotton on your plant. You will sometimes see their little legs, but pretty much it just, it's, it's cottony in their appearance. You're typically going to find these mealybugs on the underside of leaves, more specifically in the veins of the leaves, and you'll also find them in the bifurcation, so your areas, of, like the V of your um, stems of plants. They do like living in those areas, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So the other place that you're gonna find them are in newly unfurling leaves. They love soft leaves. They love the new growth. That's what they really truly want to go after. So always be careful and look for your in your new growth for these mealybugs because that's actually what alerted me to my infestation of this arrowhead plant. Okay, so they always say the more you know, right? So a little bit more about mealybugs, how they feed. So they actually are considered suckers. So they actually have a stylus-like projection in their mouth. They stick it into the plant, usually in the, the uh, branches, the stems, or the veins of the leaf, and they actually suck the nutrients out of the leaf. It's always good to know your enemy, right? So when you're dealing with these pests, it's very important to know how they feed because that will also indicate how you kill them or treat them. So what do you look for if you have an infestation? So like I said before, they tend to congregate in the bifurcation of your stems, so usually right around here, on the underside of leaves, and in your new growth, which I actually have mealybugs on this one that I'm holding right now. So this is where they will you will tend to find them. So if you have an infestation, you will start to see yellowing leaves. You also begin to see leaves that are slowly changing colors. You'll see a discoloration that's starting from the tip going towards the bottom. So on this particular leaf, it's just begun, and there are actually some mealybugs underneath the underside of this leaf. So again, you start to see discoloration, such as this one right here. So now that we know our enemy, let's talk about ways to prevent this infestation to begin with. So to begin, the first thing that you should do, and I didn't do it with this particular plant, is inspect your plants if you had them outside and you're bringing them in for the winter. I did not inspect this plant. Big mistake, the mistake number one right there. Number two, be sure to remove any leaf debris that may have collected in the bottom of the plant. So as you'll see here, I have, oh look, it's a maple leaf. <laughs> I'll clean that up later. But I have all this organic debris at the base of my plant. And guys, to be honest, you don't want this on any type of plant, indoors or outdoors. Having this type of debris at the base of your plant or tree outside will actually begin to create a very happy environment for any pest, any pest, to congregate and live. Also fungus, so keep that in mind across the board with your plants inside or out. Mealybugs are also attracted to high levels of nitrogen in the soil, so do not over fertilize. Also, do not over water your plants. Like I said earlier, they're attracted to warm, moist environments, and if you continue to over water, you've got breakdown of leaves at the base of your plant. These are going to create ideal conditions for any pests to live and breed. So now that we've talked about what mealybugs are, how to ID them, how they feed, what to do per to prevent them. We wanna talk about ways to get rid of them if you already have an infestation. So there are several ways, home remedies, natural ways, even insecticidal ways to get rid of the infestation. The first one a lot of people do, and I do it on my smaller plants, but I probably won't do it on this size plant because there's a lot going on here, is using rubbing alcohol and Q-tips. And you literally just go where you see the mealybugs and you wipe them off, you wipe them clean. You wanna wipe the entire area though because there might be some eggs or residue left over so make sure you wipe it clean so that's the first way you can get rid of these guys 
The second way is creating a homemade uh, insecticidal soap. So really you could use Dawn dish soap and mix it with water. I'm going to post a recipe in the description box below so you can check that out if you want to make your own. Thirdly, you can use neem oil. I'll probably use neem oil on this bad guy um, and I'm going to completely drench it, the underside of the leaves as well, inside the plant because like I said, they are attracted, uh, you tend to find them, I should say, congregating in the bifurcations of the stems. So I'm probably going to use neem oil on this guy. So the other thing you can use, and this is not an organic approach, so just want to put that out there, I realize that, but it is very effective, it is a systemic insecticide. Now, systemic in the, the sense of body is whole body, right? Well, in the sense of insecticide, it kind of needs the same thing. What's going to happen is you're going to put the insecticide, the systemic one, at the base of the plant, and it's going to absorb this insecticide through its roots and put it out through the entire plant. So whole system, whole body, whole plant, I guess it works. So it's going to prevent any further infestation that you already have. So if you're gonna use this, I would recommend also doing some sort of treatment, topical treatment if you already have an infestation because this is just going to kill your future infestations or I should say prevent any infestations. I do need to warn you guys about this. While this is a very effective treatment and I do use it in my house plants inside, I don't use them on anything that I bring outside. Reason being is this will kill beneficial insects. That's to include honeybees, butterflies, anything that's going to use pollen from any plants or any of that, that type of thing, it is going to get rid of the beneficial insects, ladybugs, anything. So I would not recommend using this on anything outdoors for obvious reasons. Now, if you use it in, on anything indoors and you're not moving it outside, I, I truly think it's okay to use. Um, pets, make sure your pets don't get a hold of this because obviously it's an insecticide. Okay guys, the other thing that I wanted to mention is just don't do what I did. I did not check this particular plant. I usually check all my house plants. I did not check this particular plant for an infestation. I also did not clean the debris at the base of the plant and I did not apply my insecticide that I typically use on my house plants only indoors. So really, I, I was pretty lazy on this one and it's biting me in the butt. So don't do what I did. All right, guys, that is it for my video. If for some reason I do not see you before Christmas, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas or whatever holiday you do celebrate. I also hope you guys have a wonderful start to 2020 if I don't see you before then, but hopefully you will. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.